Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of From Zero to Hero. It's time to get super comfortable again and chill a while. We'll continue our adventure. We started off in the main town. We're going uh, east now, um, doing the next area, finding the symbol of hope. We're in the next area. Uh, in this area, mobs will start popping up behind you. They do some void damage, so you kind of be, need to be aware of that. We start going south, and also mobs here kind of hit hard, so again, be careful of that. Being an acromancer, you just need to hide behind your minions, unlike what I'm doing here. Like running up ahead here, it's not that great, but you need to be a little bit more cautious than I am being here. A lot of minions, the, especially those things, they hit really hard. Anyway, we're here now, we're looking for the Lost Hope, make sure you clear a bit, because there's a little bit of a mini boss here, we need to be a bit careful, summon the minions again. As soon as you get to the chest, the mini boss will spawn, it's this thing here, when he hits his stuns, it's not gonna really affect us, being a necromancer, we have minions to tank for us, but just uh, keep an eye out for him. Hungering so leveled again, we put more points in damage. It's gonna carry us until we get uh, to our main abilities. It's a really great ability to level with. Back to the main city, we talk to this guy opening the gate. And we go up and we find these two guys. Um, and obviously they turn out to be another boss. Um, this boss... Uh, this boss will do that lightning beam as you see here it's not that hard to avoid and right afterwards he'll throw uh, an area on the ground that will deal lightning damage it's not a super hard boss he gives you plenty of time to avoid uh, his attacks but he kinda does hit hard so if you get hit you need to be careful as you see there the hit took uh, a little bit of my health but you need to get away as soon as you get hit it's not the end of the world if he if it ticks uh, a couple of times but if you stand in it you're surely gonna die as you see there that hit must have critted or something i lost i went down to like one fourth of my health have your hand ready on the potion um his life he doesn't have that much life as you see his it's, it's getting down pretty quickly and yeah, that's that's the whole setup for the boss. Avoid his lightning and just shoot and try to get him down as fast as you can. He killed my golem, but that's fine. Some mana later, he's back. Going north now, this is a bit of a long stretch. I honestly had this while I was playing. I usually try to play for half an hour and then edit the video to make it like a 10 minute video. I remove all the loading screens and everything. But this was originally gonna be video 4 and 5, but I eventually cut so much of it because a lot of it is just walking uh, straight roads. So I cut it and I just put the parts when I'm about to level or about an ability is about to level to make it more interesting for you guys. Okay, we're at the next door, going to the next area. And now we get a waypoint, we moved, walked all this area, and we're at the quest chest. Kill the mobs here. It's pretty easy. We have two chests here. Get the shards. You always want to pick the shards. Always. The shards uh, again, when they're in, the, in your inventory, you just throw them back into your forge. They don't take any room. You always want to pick them up. Okay, the last point, an acolyte. You can put more points, but... To start specking in Necromancer, you only need 20 points in Acolyte. I usually stop there. I don't put any more points in Acolyte, so as soon as I get into Necromancer, I have points available to get my first ability. Usually, when you clear this area, you're gonna have about 5, five to a little bit more points. It depends on how much uh, you level and stuff, but from 5 to like uh, a little bit more to put into your new tr your new tree or necromancer so you're gonna be able to get the first ability of your n main spec instantly we got zombie summon zombie here so start specking it 
uh, I'm not gonna be using zombies right now. I am going uh, to spec into the shades. The I have the build linked in my uh, uh, in my builds. It's the oh my god, I forgot the name of the of the thing. The minion boss thingy. The shades and some of the I gotta have the shade minions, so I'm gonna use. Uh, dread shade and use it on the shades to summon the volatile zombies so I'm just gonna level volatile zombies right now I can't level the oh, their rates I can't level the rates or the dread shade right now so I'm just gonna level zombies and then when I get the necromancer I'll just remove something to put the the rates instead this boss this boss is pretty much similar to the one before you avoid his beam he charges them a, a little bit quicker and you try to avoid the balls of fire and also you don't want to stand in melee when I was in melee he punched me and he kinda hurts also get out of his fire but it is a lot of damage and we just killed him now he has quite a lot of health so you have to be careful avoid fire have a finger ready on your potion just in case shouldn't have too much trouble killing this guy if you're on a more tanky character, you might be able to stay in a little bit of fire, but that breath he just did now, you have, you, you're gonna want to avoid that. His fire breath isn't too long, so if you get hit uh, by a couple of things, it's not the end of the world either. Just make sure to get out if you get hit once, or, or the damage is gonna keep piling up. We killed the dragon. I remember the first time I killed this dude, I thought it, it was so cool. It's when I started really appreciating this game. All the diversity in the bosses and it's really something for me. Even the trash, like I like that there are one-shotable minions and then there are stronger minions that need a little bit more time and trash. Like the bats are pretty much one-shotable and uh, then you kind of find a harder mob, you have to hit it more. And they are so different, you realize right away if the thing is uh, easily easy to be killed or if it takes a little while longer. Anyway, we're coming to a part where they start hurting with void damage. If you're a new player, uh, you're probably gonna have a little bit of health shards. It's okay to use the health shards. The basic shards like uh, strength, intelligence, uh, vitality held those basic shards are easy to find so you can spend them and uh, um, buff your gear accordingly to buff your gear in case you don't know you just hit f for the forge put the piece of gear you wanna level in the forge and just add shards imagine it as if you're adding stats to your item Alright, we keep killing here, moving along, following the golden question mark as we always do. Killing trash as we go along, S leveling up the zombies. We're going for the huge zombie with uh, a lot of uh, ward generation. It's gonna be our kinda damage, kinda ward generation ability. I want it more for ward generation, we're gonna use the raids. The raids deal a crap ton of damage, so their damage is pretty much enough so I'm not sure how I'm gonna spec the zombies yet if I wanna go for the vomit zombies or the exploding zombies so if you guys wanna give me a hint put it down in the comments because I honestly don't know where I'm gonna go with it okay here there's a little bit of a bug I think if you're hitting the wandering spirits or casting and moving as soon as you do it, it kind of locks in place and it won't really walk anymore, it will just glide. Also remember, as you see, there's a bunch of stuff attacking me and what I always keep trying to do is get behind minions or uh, avoid their attacks. When you're a caster, uh, it doesn't matter how much health and defense you get, if the minions keep hitting you, you're eventually gonna die. So you wanna try to avoid and dodge right dodge I mean by walking away of stuff rather than let your defenses do the work for you just move around the map it's the best defense there is in this game and basically all other games ever better get out of the stuff rather than get hit and hope that you don't die with the hit 
Okay, there's a bunch of mobs here. It gets a little bit intense for a little bit because um, the void bolts deal quite a lot of damage. And uh, I kind of went a little bit low on health. My minions are dead here. Keep spamming, summon the golem, try to get out, out get some mana. And we got a lucky level that put us back to full mana and now I can spam stuff. Alright, we keep going onwards for another boss. This game is filled with mini bosses, it's really amazing. Uh, this boss, well, as soon as, as you see him, move a little bit south. Um, for on the bridge, mini a bunch of minions will come as you saw, we kill them first. And then we just attack the guy. He does a lot of damage, a lot of attacks, we just need to avoid them. He might throw some fire at us and stuff, we just have to have a potion ready, but it shouldn't be too hard. Always try to avoid stuff. Also, you may see that I have a skill that I'm not uh, choosing to upgrade. That's normal, because as I mentioned before, I want to have only 20 skills in Acolyte, and uh, I'm saving the rest for Necromancer. I don't need to put them in, and then just remove them later. Alright, we entered the Temple of Etera, and it's a great place to stop. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.